Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, news has broken that former light heavyweight champion Nathan Cleverly is actually moving up now to cruiserweight. Right, Cleverly has only lost once in his pro career, and that was a devastating knockout loss to Sergei Kovalev in his last fight. So now people are coming out of the woodwork. Joe Calzaghe has come out of the woodwork. There's an article on BoxingScene.com where Calzaghe talks about how the weight loss to get to light heavy drained Nathan Cleverly and that he expects Cleverly to do some big things at Cruiserweight. Count me among the skeptics. While there are plenty of fights at Cruiserweight that could be financially lucrative for Nathan Cleverly, in my opinion, he's going to have a very hard time beating the elites at Cruiser. I think this is going to end badly. I think Cleverly got the belt at light heavy. I don't believe he's going to get the belt at Cruiser, and he's going to get beaten up in the process. Let's talk about it, right? Just consider me to be a Cleverly skeptic. Here's why. Really, in my opinion, only two types of fighters are able to rise in weight and be successful, right? One are the guys who have huge punches. In other words, the punch works at lightweight, it works at welterweight, it works at junior middleweight, right? The guy has concussive power. When he lands the punch, it puts you to sleep. Think Oscar De La Hoya back in the day. His left hand was concussive, right? Oscar was always a big puncher, right? Those guys can gain weight because if they land, they land, they end fights, right? The other group that, in my opinion, can rise up through the weights are the guys who don't get hit. In other words, you're not getting hit at lightweight. You're not getting hit at welterweight. These are the defensive wizard guys, right? Think Bernard Hopkins, right? Hopkins, you know, it's very rare where you see Hopkins dazed and confused reeling around the ring, right? Understand, you know, Bernard Hopkins has never been knocked out right you're talking about a guy who quite frankly is very hard to hit square regardless of who he fights right it could be heavy hitters like Tavares Cloud Hopkins is able to stand in front of Antonio Tarver Cloud and hold his own when he does get hit as he did in that first Jean Pascal fight multiple times right let's remember Hopkins hits the canvas in that fight Hopkins is able to get up make adjustments he doesn't get hit like that the rest of the Pascal duology, right? Rough moments early in the first fight makes adjustments. Now understand Nathan Cleverly is certainly not the former. He barely has a punch at light heavyweight, right? He's not a big puncher. He's a volume puncher. There's a difference, right? His punch isn't big. At 175, I believe it's going to be non-existent at 200, right? And understand, the weight gap is that profound between light heavy and cruiser, right? We're not talking about the gap between junior welter, 140, and welter, a 7-pound weight gap, right? No, you need to multiply that by 3 and then add 4 pounds. The gap between light heavy and cruiser is huge. You can literally fit weight classes between the two divisions, right? So we know Cleverly doesn't have the big punch. In my opinion, he's also not hard to hit, right? This isn't Floyd Mayweather. This isn't Bernard Hopkins. This is a guy who gets hit, 
He's down multiple times in the Kovalev fight, and that fight barely got started, right? That fight only went a few rounds. Against Tony Bellew, Bellew had his moments in that fight, right? Cleverly's genius was that he was a great athlete who was prepared to trade at high volume for 12 rounds. Because he was big at light heavy, right, he wasn't going to be pushed around the ring. He had the body to hold his ground. And, of course, he was the kind of guy who could hit you twice for every time you hit him. So his matches were really wars of attrition, right? They're high volume battles. He's getting hit, but he's hitting you back. Now that worked for him at 175 where he's big. He's not going to be big at cruiser, right? Those wars of attrition are going to be against guys who normally weigh 25 pounds more than cleverly. There are other dynamics that work against him. Just consider this a rule of thumb, right? The heavier the fighters, right, the older they can be and still be effective. So you have heavyweights really coming into their own in their mid-30s. Take a look at Lucas Brown's age right now. He's just coming into his own. He's older, right? Cruiser is not much different. A lot of these guys are older. They're savvy. Now understand, while, you know, smaller divisions, let's say, you know, bantamweight, you need to be young and spry and high volume, right? And keep in mind, the only guys really making bantamweight are really young guys or really small guys. At Cruiser, I believe to succeed, you have to be savvier. So you have big time chess players, and I mean big time chess players. At Cruiser, these guys aren't just big. But these guys are also technicians. So, I mentioned Antonio Tarver. I know he's been out of the ring for a while, right? I understand he's in his 40s. You know, if Tarver ever gets back to 200, just picture a technician who's a southpaw, who years ago gave Roy Jones problems, who recently gave Danny Green problems. Understand... Jones and Danny Green really are boxing Hall of Famers. These are guys who know their way around the ring, right? You know, Tarver really only loses to elite fighters, uh, Bernard Hopkins, right? But understand, Tarver's a master chess player, and he's accustomed to fighting guys with much bigger punches than Nathan Cleverly. Let's talk about Danny Green. I understand Danny Green had problems against Wolderchick. Right? But understand, Danny Green was winning that fight before he faded late in that fight. I understand Danny Green had his problems against Tarver. Right? But understand, Danny Green's a master chess player. Right? Danny Green isn't trying to just physically impose himself on you. He's outthinking you in the ring. Look at the Danny Green-Shane Cameron fight. Right? These are exactly the kind of crafty veterans who I feel have much more boxing skill, just objectively, than does Nathan Cleverly. Cleverly is a guy who doesn't use a lot of movement. He's a great athlete, but he's trying to plant roots in the canvas and out-physical you. Right? What he would face in Green and Tarver are older fighters, right? These guys are in their 40s. But these guys are savvy enough not to stand in front of you. In other words, they would present not just a weight dynamic for it. But they have higher boxing IQs than Nathan Cleverly. They've been in the game much longer than Nathan Cleverly, right? Just by boxing standards, these guys are master technicians, Let's talk about some other guys. Dennis Lebedev. Now let's face it. His fight against Felix the Cat was bogus. Right? Because now we're finding out that Guillermo Jones 
actually took diuretics to make weight. Right? One questions whether Guillermo Jones can legitimately make 200 pounds right now. Right? And let's face it too, Lebedev got thrown off of his game in that fight because Lebedev's eye blew up early. So Lebedev was fighting really out of one eye. Now, eye injuries are part of boxing, but you and I know. Good luck to the next man who thinks he can just come in and blow up Dennis Lebedev's eyes. Right? And we know what Dennis Lebedev with two eyes could do. You saw Roy Jones unconscious for a long time. Think Manny Pacquiao after the last Marquez fight, right? Roy Jones wasn't TKO'd. Roy Jones was knocked out. It was so bad that as I was looking at the film, I was hoping Roy would wake up. And when Roy woke up, I am positive that people had to tell him what country he was in. Right? The fight was in Moscow, right? Roy was out of it. Now you're telling me that Nathan Cleverly is going to come to Dennis Lebedev's division and is going to deal with a guy who was already beaten Enzo Calzaghi's cruiserweight, right? Enzo Macar Macarinelli, right? I mean, all I'm saying is if Cleverly thinks he can fight the style he's fighting at light heavy, at cruiser, he's going to run into a guy like Dennis Lebedev who's not going to take a step back, who's going to be throwing haymakers, right? Who is going to have a punch by cruiserweight standards against a guy who doesn't have a punch by light heavyweight standards. Let's also talk about the athleticism. You know what? Nathan Cleverly is a big time athlete at light heavy. Marco Huck's a big-time athlete at Cruiser. Right? I mean, understand, Marco Huck gave Alexander Povetkin all he could handle. Right? My point to you is simply, Cleverly would find himself in against guys of similar athleticism who feel that they have nothing to fear from his punch. Right? Steve Cunningham has been in with Tyson Fury. Right? I'm guessing Steve Cunningham wouldn't hesitate to fight Nathan Cleverly at Cruiser, right? And so while there is a lot of money to be made, I could easily see a Nathan Cleverly-Shane Cameron fight selling out an arena. I believe Cleverly would really have problems against the old guard of the Cruiserweight division because all of these guys are savvy, right? Ferrat Arslan, in his 40s, very savvy. Very dangerous. Guillermo Jones, in his 40s, very savvy, very dangerous, right? In fact, just got stripped of a belt in his next fights against a title holder. Dennis Lebedev, in his mid-30s, all of these guys are older than you think. They've been around the game a long time. I'm telling you, it's perilous. Gaining weight in the higher weight classes because the fighters are older and more experienced. Being an athlete without a punch is not going to cut it unless you can make guys miss. Unless you can present some dynamic that's going to bother them. One of the most mentally tough fighters I've encountered is Christoph Wulderchich. Right, you're talking about a guy who is in Australia losing against Danny Green. And he hangs in there. He doesn't lose focus. Right? He fights another unbeaten guy. I forget his name. I think it's Chakiov or some name like that. Same type thing. He's losing early. Hangs in there. There are fights where he's hit the canvas, gotten off the canvas, and beaten excellent fighters. Right? The cruiserweight division, not just has older fighters, but they have technicians, right? If you're the kind of guy accustomed to wars of attrition, if you're not a technician yourself who can avoid getting hit, you're going to be in all kinds of trouble. Let's just say James Tony made the mistake of fighting Dennis Lebedev. That fight didn't end well for Tony. And keep in mind, Tony 
has a whole set of boxing skills that Nathan cleverly can't even dream of. Right? Counter punching, shoulder rolls, and stuff like that. The problem is, of course, the water in the cruiserweight division is deep. These guys are athletes. You can't be a heavyweight, just lose the weight, and think you're competitive with guys who themselves have been in the game for several years. Right? And who are physically fit. So I'm a skeptic. I know many people are going to have some narrative that says, oh, Nathan Cleverly was draining himself at uh, light heavy and he's going to be stronger at cruiser. Just ask yourself, who's the better technician in your opinion? Danny Green or Nathan Cleverly? Guillermo Jones or Nathan Cleverly? Eddie Chambers or Nathan Cleverly? Right, Johan Hernandez, or Nathan Cleverly, Steve Cunningham, or Nathan Cleverly. Those are the waters you're going to have to swim in if you're going to make it at Cruiser. And as I said before, this is different than moving from middleweight, 160, to super middle, 168. Could you imagine jumping, not 8 pounds, but 25 pounds? Right, the gap between middleweight and super middle is less than one third of the weight gap between light heavy and cruiser. And as I said before, when you get to cruiser, you're going to find guys who have been around for years who are very savvy. I mean, very savvy. Are you really going to just show up in Marco Huck's division and think you're going to outmuscle him? Right? Danny Green might run out of gas against Antonio Tarver. What's Nathan Cleverly going to do to cause Danny Green to run out of gas? And let me tell you, if Danny Green has even half a tank, you're dealing with a savvy fighter who's hard to hit, who is turning, has you bouncing into his shoulder and stuff like that, and who knows how to pace himself. So I'm a skeptic of Nathan Cleverly. I believe hardcore gamblers need to watch Cleverly's career. You can bet on Cleverly at Cruiser as long as he fights non-elite guys. But I'm just here to tell you, once he starts fighting the names I'm talking about, I believe the water is going to be too deep for him. That's a huge jump between light heavy and cruiser. And I don't believe Cleverly has the defensive skills to make that jump. I don't believe he has the punch to make that jump. And I don't believe he has the boxing IQ of guys who've been around as long as... Danny Green, Antonio Tarver, Guillermo, Felix the Cat Jones, Eddie Chambers. I think all of those guys give him a tough time. What would he do to deal with Eddie Chambers' jab? Understand, Eddie Chambers beat Demetrenko in Germany in the heavyweight division. Right? Food for thought. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.